Hey, you're just in time for another awesome episode of On Top and Hot with your favorite host, John Zadar. And this is April 26th. Now, this is Wednesday, which means that Thursday I've got my live streaming event at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time when you hear that market bell going off. Me and Lily Star go live. Now, we go online for about an hour. We're talking to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. So bring us a ticker. If you've been doing some DD and got some hot charts, share them with us. We'd love it. But any stock you want to look at, we'll look at it with you. That's 4 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. Be there. I'll be looking for you. So what we do on this show is we like to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks under $5 that have the potential to make us money. Well, we looked at this stock yesterday. It made us some money yesterday if you'd gotten out of it, but I'm sure most of us didn't because the situation with this stock is they're giving away a dividend. However, they were giving away this dividend back in December. You had to buy all your shares up to December 16th. That was the cutoff date. And they anticipated the distribution date to be December 30th. That didn't happen. That came and went. We've had a few news presses telling us that everything's with FINRA, everything's done, we're just waiting. But they never gave us a date. Well, yesterday we got a news press and they gave us a distribution date. But more than that, they gave us a new record date. Yes, they opened up the door and said you can start buying more shares and they will qualify for dividends. And it's like, well, okay, let's dive into this. So there was a lot of excitement yesterday and the stock skyrocketed. Well, there was information that a lot of us didn't take a look at that was made available to us, but it wasn't easy to see. And once people started seeing that information today, the stock started falling. Let me share what this news press actually said yesterday. I'm only looking at a few sentences here. The corporate action for the spinoff dividend has been published on the FINRA daily list of April 24th, 2023. So now FINRA has published it. Now they say FINRA had it a long time ago, but I don't know. It's just been published April 24th and they give us a link right here. Now this is where I think the problem starts. We took their word for everything. And as a matter of fact, it's what they didn't say that we didn't pay attention to here. I am doubting that most people jumped immediately into this link. Now, we're going to do that here in a second, but I want to share just two more sentences with you from this press release. The trading of the WDHI shares will be subject to a registration statement being approved by the SEC. Well, that's a little misleading. They have not registered these shares. They haven't even started the registration process. So there's nothing for the SEC to approve. They are not registered. And if they're not registered, they cannot be put up for sale. They also go on to say it is anticipated, here we go again, that the initial price of the WDHI shares will be $3.50. That's not hardcore. That's just a number they're throwing out there saying, this is what we think maybe possibly it's going to be. Now, Let's see what that information is that most people didn't know. We're going to click that link. Now this, we're presuming, is going to take us right to the filing so we can know. What's this? Where, where is it? I'm looking for HNRC. HNRC. Oh, come on. Where is it? Right? It's not easy to find. They gave you a link, but you still don't know what information there is. This is the shortcut. You've got to figure this out. You've got to come over here to the date. They told us it was April 24th. So you got to choose that date, start and finish. Then, unless you want to go sorting, put in the ticker. I see it right there. HNRC. But you had to put in the date. It wasn't in your face. And it still isn't in my face. It says spin off HNRC. And here is the document. Open that document up, folks. And they tell you this is a spin off for Houston Natural Resources, ticker HNRC, and they are giving one restricted and unregistered share of worldwide diverse and holdings for every two shares you hold. So for every two shares of HNRC you have, they're going to give you one share of WDHI, which should be about $3.50. So they anticipate. The problem is, is that they're not registered, so you can't sell them, and they're restricted, so you can't touch them. There's nowhere they can go. There is no market for them. Now, there is the possibility they could activate them. Yeah, they could put them on the market at some point in time, but there's no rules to force them to do that, and they haven't given us an activation date. 
And in my opinion, it has been five months that we've been waiting for this dividend since December. And they were talking about it in November. Nowhere in these last five months have they even hinted to these shares being unregistered and restricted. I don't think anybody would have bought into the company had they known that. To me, it's a scam. They got our money twice. I sold out today. I got my average down to 30 cents. I thought everything was good. I too did not click that link. I took for granted. The one thing you got to look for when you're reading these things about dividends, let them tell you it is a common share that you are earning. Not a preferred share, not a restricted share, not an unregistered share. You want a common share. Those shares are on the market and you can sell them as soon as you get them. So we've looked at a lot of information about this company in the last two days. So I'm just going to jump on over to that chart right now because it had a hard day once word got out about this. Having a deja vu moment here. <laughs> This is HNRC, six-month, four-hour view. And of course, we're doing our charting on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You get this from TD Ameritrade. So our high bubble here, this was the last time they were selling their dividends. She started at 37 cents and ran up to 84 cents and then had an abrupt fall early. The cutoff day was December 16th and it started to fall December 14th. She fell all the way down here to 6.2 cents. She did that at the beginning of March. Got a good bounce off of that up to the 200 and then fell back. And then when the news came out yesterday, she ripped. 175% gains by the end of the day. She started down here at 12 cents and went up to about 42 cents during market hours. After market, she hit about 45 cents and then had a tremendous fall all the way down here. And currently, we are at 26 cents. I know we haven't said that yet, have we? We are at 26 cents right now. Now, what's interesting are the oscillators. Our technicals say things are hot. Our PPO is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up. I mean, they've cooled off. You can see they were pushing up hard, but they're still pushing up. Our RSI did have a huge drop, but it is again on an incline. So the oscillators say she is climbing again. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. Nothing going on except for the last two days. Had a huge rip yesterday and a huge drop today. And it looks like she's respecting that 20-day SMA and is bouncing off of it, but is still underneath her 9-day SMA. These oscillators are looking more like what the chart does. You can see the big up and the big down, the big up and the big down, all the way down. So everything is starting to get weaker the closer we get. Five day, five minute. So there was our run yesterday. She stayed high, right? She didn't give anything away. Soon as the bell opened up, she started falling. Hit the 200, came under the 200, looked like she was going to manage around that, and now she's pushed under, and she is struggling just to get back on top of the 200. Our technicals down here actually say she's trying to recover. I can see that we've got a crossover trying on our PPO. Same thing on our MACD. It's trying to cross over and get on top of the signal line. And our RSI is climbing. And while the PPO is pushing up, our ADX is pushing down. And whenever you see the ADX trend continuation pushing down and the PPO going up like that, spreading apart, you know the price is going up. So the oscillators say she does have some life in her and she wants to come back. But is she going to get aggressive? Are these last two days before the cutoff date going to get real strong? I don't know. I think this poisonous news is out and about. And I don't think anybody's happy about it. I think everybody's been dumping their shares. I know I did. Now that we got that out of the way, let's look at some stocks we are interested in. All of these have got hot charts and hot catalysts. Now I'm going to focus in on the catalyst first and we'll look at the peripheral information after that and then we'll go look at the charts. The first ticker we're going to look at, it's an old friend of ours. We looked at it April 11th. This is Teal. Tingle Group Incorporated. Ticker TIO, she finished the day at $2.16 with 15.5% gains today. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now we got two good pieces of news here. One that came out April 13th. The company regained compliance with NASDAQ's minimum bid price requirement. They were under a dollar for too long. They got a warning. They fixed it. Everything is good. And it is good. People are quite happy about that. Then we had a big piece of news come out today. 
They tell us here that Tingo Mobile signs exclusive agreement with Prime Commodity Exchange, that's PCX, and All Farmers Association of Nigeria, AFAN, securing considerable produce supply, nationwide warehousing facilities, and enhanced commodity trading opportunities. This really is a huge deal. It is massive. The strategic partnership uniquely positions Tingo to monetize Nigeria's crop ecosystem across its population of 213 million. Now, they give us a lot of information in these bullets, but they were kind enough to consolidate it into one paragraph for us. Under the terms of the agreement, Tingo Mobile, in partnership with the two companies, PCX and AFEN, has been granted a 30-year lease over the entire AFAN's existing network of warehouses, which now has 2,300. But they're going to increase that to 80,000 over the next two years, and that is part of the agreement. And each warehouse is approximately 200 square meters in size. They tell us down here that the agreement grants Tingo Mobile the right of first refusal to purchase or trade the crops in the warehouses, and they can do what they want with them. So they're not just in charge of the warehouses, they're in charge of what's in the warehouses as well. The AFAN warehouses benefit from PCX's leading edge electronic warehouse receipt system, which interfaces with PCX's own world-class commodity exchange and utilizes its automated trading system technology to provide real-time matching, clearing, and settlement of commodity transactions. And there's more information here, folks. Lots of due diligence available here. And this is just one of the subsidiaries. They do have more. So, what was the relative volume around the company today with this big news? We got a big jump. It's almost 400% increase, going from 1.3 million to 4 million. Share structure for Tingo. They tell us she's got 163 million outstanding, and no way I'm buying 5.5 million. I did go look this up just too many numbers. I had 69, 72, 108, 118. I have no clue what the float is. All we know is it's under 163 million. Financials for Tingo. Looking excellent. Oh my God. Look at the last four years. 477,000, 1.1 million, jumping to 55 million to 146 million. Let's take a look at those quarters. Holy cow. Look at that last quarter. Look at that jump. She went from 9 to 11 to 13, which was nice, steady growth. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, that. So, yeah, she's making money. She's looking better all the time. Looking at her disclosures, we do have an 8K here. I think this is about them regaining compliance. Yeah, that's them regaining compliance. All is good. So, there is nothing else to look at but that chart. So, let's go do that. Back to Think or Swim. This is TIO Tingo Group, six-month, four-hour chart. Low bubble hit us in October, 57 cents, and our high hit us today, $2.21, pulling back to $2.16. She has been climbing slowly all this time until right here, momentum picked up, as did all the volume. Right here is where we looked at it. That's April 11th. She was $1.38, and she hit a high today of that $2.21, pulling back to $2.16. She's been riding up pretty much on her 20 days. She is floating on her 9, but when she falls, she comes down to her 20. She tested it here. She did not come all the way down to the 50, just under the 20, back to the 20, and she is bouncing. Oscillators look good. PPO is climbing. MACD is climbing. RSI is just at the overbought right now. Things are looking good on the four-hour chart. 20-day, one-hour view? Well, that looks excellent. We like to see that. You want to see a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner and a nice run uphill in between. Everything is looking good. She is way above her 200, pretty much floating above her 50-day. She did test it here. She's bounced on it right there, and she's pushing up. Oscillators say she still wants to climb. Things are pushing up. PPO and MACD are there. There is a wee bit of turnaround at the top right now, but even our RSI is still under the overbought, just right there. Five day, five minute. All right, a little wackier here. 
you can tell she's following that 200. She did come under it here, hit a low of $1.63, got back on top of it, tested it, has pushed herself up, and is going sideways right now. You can see she likes to stay close to her 200, so I would anticipate that she's going to come back down to the 200, which would be an opportunity. That would be the right place to buy into this. Her oscillators, what are they telling us? Uh, she's going sideways right now. I really can't tell if she's trying to recover. Everything is just dead nuts right now. <laughs> Except for the RSI, it is trying to push up. We've got some aftermarket activity there. And it's going sideways very tightly, waiting maybe for the 200-day SMA to come up to it. And maybe when it gets there, it'll start to climb again. Watch the chart. Watch the volume on TIO. I got a hot NASDAQ penny stock to share with you here. This is ticker APLT, Applied Therapeutics. Her chart is killing it, folks. She's been running for 11 days straight, and she just broke out over the 200-day SMA maybe two or three days ago, and when she did, <laughs> she put it into third gear. The heck with second gear. She went directly for third, and she is still ripping right now. She has got catalysts, so I think there's more to be gotten. APLT, she finished the day at $1.52 with just over 13% gains. Now, I found two pieces of news I think are catalysts that are still happening right now. We've got one that came out March 23rd. This was their fourth quarter year end financial results. Now, truth of the matter is they're not making any money, but the reason we're over here is they give us other information that is quite valuable. They tell us here that Applied Therapeutics is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company developing a pipeline of novel drug candidates against validated molecular targets in indications of high unmet medical needs. We are pleased with the clinical progress in 2022 across all three of our registrated phase three programs, and we look forward to the data readouts in the year ahead. So they've got three drugs in phase three, which is the very last phase. This is before you hit home plate. All they got to do is finish that. They're probably going to be approved if they've gotten this far, and those products are going to go on the market, and they're going to start making money. Now, that other piece of news is huge. On the 24th, they had a private investment of $30 million. This is going to help them out. These drugs, as they come onto the market, have to have distribution and marketing, and you need money to do that. And R&D, research and development, biopharmacies, they don't have any money to do that, so you need more investments. They got what they need. So they got three drugs in phase three trial that they're going to give information to us for this year, they said, and they just got $30 million. So what do you think the relative volume was around this company today? Well, <laughs> pretty big. I mean, the numbers aren't huge, but that's a nice jump from 310,000 to almost 2 million. Share structure for APLT. All right, I honestly did not go out and look this up because it's just no fun. I really can't find the numbers. So what we know is they have an outstanding share count here of 48 million. We know our float is under 48 million. As I said, financially, they have nothing coming in yet. That's why this is big news. They're at the end of these phase trials and they got money for the marketing and distribution. So once these things get approved, cha-ching, cha-ching, they should start making revenues. Disclosures for APLT. We've got 18K here. Can't remember what this one was about. Oh, that's the big deal. How could I forget that one? That's the $30 million investment on the 24th. And they closed it today on the 26th. So there is still heat available and the chart looks like it's got heat. Let me show you. When you're hot, you're hot. This is ticker APLT, six month, four hour chart. Our high, that's back in August of $2.18. Our low hit in October of 50 cents. Bouncing off of that low, crossing to 50, crossing the 200, and then kind of hanging around the 200 until right around here when things started changing. This is our 11 day run right there. And once she broke that 200, as I said, she put it into high gear and started up that mountain. She has been floating on the nine day SMA all the way up, only had one poke right there onto the 20 as she was pushing herself, catapulting up over that 200. Volume has been strong the last three days and our osculators are also very strong. PPO, MACD, RSI, everything pushing to the moon. You couldn't ask for anything better.
20 day, one hour view. Oh God, does that look sweet. Everything is swooping up. Our price, all of our SMAs, nice even gaps between them. It all looks nice. Our oscillators, they are still growing, but they've had a little bit of pullback just because of that aftermarket mark right there. Looking at our five day, five minute. Oh, that's such a pretty picture. Love to see a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. 88 cents to $1.63. Almost 100% run in the last five days. She is up over top of that 200, bouncing off of it every now and then. And it looks like she has graduated up to the 50-day SMA. She's now using that as her strong SMA. She is breaking through that right now after market. Looks like she could be trying to come around. What do our oscillators say? Well, the price is pushing up, but the pressure is pushing down. This is going to be a tough one to read. We're going to have to keep our eye on this in the morning to see what's going on. But she's got three drugs in phase three trial. Boy, this is what we wait for. I don't know what the drugs are. Have not done a deep dive. I'm going to leave that to you. And she just got $30 million so that she can market and distribute these drugs when they come out. And I'm sure there's other things they're doing with it too more due diligence. So APLT, I think it deserves to be on your watch list. Last ticker we're taking a look at is a hot OTC penny stock. This is ticker DCMDF, Data Communications Management Corps. And we're going to call her Data Comms just to make it easy. Now, if you like the last chart we were looking at, wait till you see this one. This has been in an uptrend since February 28th. And I think it's going to keep going because we've got a fresh hot catalyst. Data comms, she finished today at $2.54 and a half cents and almost 9% gains. She's on the best tier, the QX. This is the top tier of the OTC where you not only have to audit your financials, but you got to give us all the information you have on the company. They give us so much information, they could easily be on the major exchanges. This is the most trustworthy, most transparent tier, the QX. Now, they have a verified profile, but I don't see a verified transfer agent, which is a little curious considering we've got all these green ticks and penny stock exempt, which I love to see. This tells me that the company's been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars of assets during that entire time period, and they've kept up with their financials. They've proven that they're responsible and reliable. They remove that riskiness you get with startup companies. So I love seeing that there. So what is the big catalyst? Well, most of this news is either about their financials or closing the deal that they just closed yesterday. Let's jump into this news press. They tell us here that the company is a leading provider of marketing and business communication solutions. And today they announced the closing of its previously announced acquisition of the Canadian operations R&R Donnelly and Sons for a total cash purchase price of $130 million. With the addition of RRD Canada, DCM will have significantly larger presence in the Canadian market from day one, from yesterday, with an estimated combined revenue of $520 million for 2022, and an enhanced portfolio of products and services, and an expanded customer base serving more than 400 enterprise clients across a broad range of industry verticals. So they have got a huge deal they've just made between the two companies. They made $520 million last year. How much money did this company make? Well, let's go find out. Let's start with that relative volume. Relative volume for the company, what? With that news, it dropped? It was already under the radar at 21,000 shares and it dropped like 66% to just over 6,000 shares. Very surprising. Share structure for the company. Again, I did not go look this up. 44 million is the outstanding share count. They tell us last year it was 27 million. So we really don't know, but we know it's under 44 million, which isn't bad. Looking at the financials for data communications. This is what we want to know. They said they did 520 million between the two companies in 2022. Well, in 2022, they did 202 million, which leaves 318 million that the other company did. Whoa. They got a good deal. <laughs> what are the disclosures for the company? 
Uh, let's see. We got no disclosures over here at all, and they are all caught up on their financials. So the only thing we got to look at is that on fire chart. Let me show you what I found. Can you believe that is a six month, four hour view for DCMDF? It looks beautiful. We got our low bubble in this corner, 86 cents, high bubble today of $2.55 and pretty much a climb all that time. Now, most of the serious climbing started here in February. She was already minding her own business, just sitting on top of the 50 day. And then all of a sudden she got spunky jumped right up on top of that nine day SMA and clung to it. She got married to it and she rode it all the way up for the next two months, never even touching any of the other SMAs, keeping the gaps between the SMAs nice and even. This looks beautiful. The volume was real strong when she started her climb and it has tapered off, but the climb has not. Our oscillators don't look bad. Our PPO is pushing up. MACD has got a crossover right now going up and our RSI is in the overbought. So things look good. 20 day, one hour view. Oh, we got another low bubble in this corner. High in that, I really do love these charts. She's been floating over her 50 day SMA, never touched it once. She's on her nine day and when she drops, she bounces off of her 20. Tests her 20, bounces off the 20. Everything is looking secure here. And the oscillators actually look better on the one hour chart than they do the four hour. Our MACD's got a strong incline growing, PPO is still climbing, and our RSI is still on fire. Five day, five minute. You're gonna get three for three? Of course we are. Low bubble of 224, floating on the nine day. She did break through the nine day. She was at $2.48, came down to 233, and immediately put herself back up on top of that nine day, and she's climbing again. Everything evenly spaced. Oscillators say she's still growing. Everything is still pushing up, and our RSI can't get any closer to being on fire. It's at 69.9. I like DCMDF. I think she's got a hot catalyst. I think that chart is sweet. She's been climbing for two months and doesn't look like she's shown down. We've even got a high bubble she hasn't even pulled back from yet. So yeah, you need to be putting DCMDF on your watch list right now. I hope you were paying attention today. How many stocks did we cover? Right, four, but really only three of them you want to think about investing in. Though I'm speaking for myself, I am not investing back into HNRC. I originally wanted those dividends like everyone else, and I wasn't worried if the price came down on HNRC because I was going to hang around for other spinouts that they say they're going to be doing. Well, if this is the way they handle their spinouts, I'm done. I can find other stocks that treat me better like maybe the three we looked at today. They definitely have my interest and I hope they have your interest too. But do some more due diligence, folks. You know I didn't cover it all. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.